Hi and welcome to Rosebred Homestead. It is fall, we are in the last half of September, and thankfully our hot, hot weather is beginning to subside. It's only going to be 85 degrees. I absolutely love the angle of the sun in the fall. It just, it just seems to bring out the goldenness of everything around us. And of course it's the season when the leaves change, the, the uh, weather starts to get more chilled, and it really is my favorite season of the year. And it is the perfect time for tomato bisque soup. Homemade, delicious. And that is what we are going to do today when we come back in just a moment. One of the things about food safety in canning is that if you know a few of the really basic principles of good food safety, and especially um, aligned with the recommendations of the USDA, it is okay for you to do a little bit of experimenting on your own. And that is exactly what this recipe is all about. We are doing tomato bisque soup today. We're going to pressure can it, and it is at the request of one of our subscribers. And as I searched for a recipe, I've never pressure canned um, tomato bisque soup before, well, except for my practice round that I did prior to this video. And so I went in search of good instructions for home canning tomato bisque soup, and I did not find any. The USDA does not have a recommended recipe. So combining what I already know about best practices of canning, I have put together a recipe that um, Jim and I think is really pretty good. So I'm going to be sharing you what those best practices are so that as you experiment, you can still stay within the good safe food guidelines. Now our recipe today um, is not going to turn out in the jar a soup that is ready to heat and eat. And that is because we've got to follow guidelines and I'll share those with you as we go. So if you look right here, I have everything already. Tomatoes, celery, onions, um, this is garlic, some spices, and then the thing that holds it all together, which is broth. Now originally, tomato bisque soup was based on a shellfish broth, uh, but that has become less and less popular and has now been replaced more with a poultry broth. Now, uh, when I make it um, just from scratch to eat without canning it, I'm gonna, I do things differently than what I'm gonna show you today. But while these jars are processing, we're going to come back in the kitchen because it's almost lunchtime, and we are going to open one of these jars that I canned in my practicing, and I'm gonna show you what to do to get it from the jar um, to the table with a couple of extra additions. So, let's get started. The first thing that we're going to talk about is the broth. Now, um, in my practice, um, I used our um, turkey, roasted turkey broth. We have a video on that. And, oh my gosh, it was so yummy. Today, I'm going to use hand-canned chicken broth. No, actually, this is not canned. I didn't process it. I cooked it down from a couple of leftover um, broiled chickens that we got at Costco and I made this earlier this week and this broth I put it hot hot in jars and I put the lid a new lid and ring on but I put it in my refrigerator I did not process it so because this is cold and here is one of the canning basic best practices um, we are going to heat it now these did seal but I would never put these on my pantry shelf because they were not processed. And they're sealed, which is good, 
but uh, they've been in the refrigerator for about four days. So I'm going to dump these into this pot and we are going to heat this broth. We don't ever want to add cold broth to something that we are going to be putting in a hot canner. And our canner right now is being brought up to a simmer out on our stove, our canning stove um, outside. So I'm going to heat these up so that they will be either very warm or hot by the time we put them in the jars. Not necessarily boiling, but we do want them to be nice and warm. All right, on the stove this goes. Tomato bisque soup obviously starts with tomatoes. And the tomatoes, these tomatoes, are out of a can. Oh, horror of horrors. I'm going to poison us all by using canned tomatoes. But I've used canned stuff my whole life, and so I'm not a bit concerned. I am more concerned with about efficiency and what we produce on our own. We can't seem to produce tomatoes here. And so my alternative is to either find some to buy in bulk, which I've not been able to do because of COVID this year. So I have reverted to canned tomatoes. Now these were um, whole tomatoes, which I have using my hands just crushed. And so they are in chunks. Now you might be wondering, because if you know tomato bisque soup, you know that it is a very smooth, silky soup that has had some cream stirred into it, which is, oh my gosh, it's so yummy. So why am I going to be satisfied with these tomatoes in chunks? And that brings us to the very next best practice in canning soups. We want our, our foods that are going to go into the jars to be chunky, whether it's meat or vegetables, tomatoes in this case with these other vegetables, about half of the jar should be filled with the chunks of food and then filled with broth. The reason for that is it's all about getting the um, high enough temperature to the very center of the jar. If it is one thick viscous blob of food, it is much more difficult to penetrate. With the chunks being in there, with the liquid filling all around those chunks, the USDA has established through scientific research that the temperature is easier to get in right to the center. So that's what we're going to do. We are going to start filling our jars by putting the vegetables in first. Now, this recipe is um, one that I've just sort of created. And so I'm just going to tell you the amounts as we go. So per quart jar, I'm putting in a half a cup of celery and a fourth of a cup of chopped onions. Then we are going to add a cup and a half, and I want to get a combination of the chunks and the juice, a cup and a half of the tomato mixture. So here we go, cup and a half right here, and I'm going to pour that in on top. So this shows that we have about a half a jar of the chunky vegetables um, uh, in the jar. Now I'm going to add the seasoning. So I'm going to put just a little bit of salt. Um, we will probably add more salt at the table and a couple of uh, and a little bit of ground pepper. Um, this is ground cayenne. And I have a measuring set that measures a pinch and a dash and a smidgen. So I'm just going to put a smidgen, which is just a little tiny bit, of this cayenne pepper. So about that much. And then my secret ingredient for tomato bisque soup is, this is Spanish smoked paprika. And it gives the tomato bisque soup a fabulous taste. But you need to really be careful that you do not add too much of this. 
We don't want that smoky taste to be overpowering, but just to lend a little bit of aroma and a, a, a hint of a flavor. And I'm also gonna use just kind of a heaping smidgen of that. And that's the extent of the spices. And then we will come back and at the end we will add the broth. So I'm gonna do one more jar on camera and then I'm gonna fill the rest of them um, off camera. So here we go, a little faster this time. Half a cup of celery, fourth of a cup of onions. Oh, I forgot on this one. I forgot I'm using about a half of a teaspoon of chopped garlic. So let me go back and put that in that one. I'm gonna put that one in here. And this was about seven whole cloves, large cloves of um, garlic. And then I'm going to add the tomatoes. Cup and a half. And the spices, tiny bit of salt, little bit of fresh ground pepper, a heaping smidgen of smoked paprika, and a barely smidgen of cayenne pepper. All right, we'll be back when I have all these finished. I have filled three of the jars with broth. I'm just going to take the last of it here and pour into my silicone measurer, which makes it so convenient because the silicone does not transfer the heat to the point that I can't t hold it. So I'm pouring in the broth now and I'm going to be very careful here to be sure that I leave an inch of head sprays In terms of the tomatoes that you would want to use, if you have homegrown tomatoes, um, you can prepare those any way you want to, so long as um, the consistency is kind of chunky, the way we demonstrated here, so you have a combination of juice and the chunks of tomatoes. And the seeds are okay, because in the end, we're going to blend this up to where the seeds are gonna be obliterated. Now, notice that I have run out of broth here, my home canned broth and I still have a quart and a little bit to do. So I am going to mix up some more from this um, chicken flavored bouillon that I often use, and I will finish filling these two jars with that. So we'll be back in just a second. I'm going to finish up now. This broth has really good flavor. The only thing is it is a little sodium rich which I usually dilute down by adding a bit more water, which I did in this case. And so this will finish us up. There we go. I'm just gonna check for air bubbles. And while I do that, notice that I'm kind of stirring things up a little bit. Now I have my paper towel with hot water and I'm going to wipe around all these rims. Now, because that broth was so hot, it has now heated up all the ingredients, and that's what we want. Okay. But these were washed with hot, soapy water. Sometimes I do it in the dishwasher. These actually were stored out in our garage with water. Anytime I have empty canning jars, I put uh, clean water in them to help with our water storage. Uh, finger tight, not so tight that as these boil in the canner that uh, the steam cannot escape out from under the lid. That's important. All right, so these are ready to go out to the canner and we'll meet you out there. Oh, it's a windy day out here. We're going to have to put our quilt around our windbreak here so the flames don't go out. I have four in the canner already. I'm putting the last three in. The water is simmering. So we have a hot canner, 
pot jars, seven quarts, putting the lid on. We're going to bring the heat up. And we are going to bring this canner to a good rolling boil so that steam will just vent out here. We're going to allow that steam to vent out for 10 minutes to clear all the air out until it is only steam on the inside of the canner. Then we will put the weight on the vent like this and we're going to bring it up to, uh, for our elevation, uh, 13 pounds. We keep it between 13 and 15 and we will process these for 90 minutes. The reason that these have to be pressure canned instead of water bath is because the addition of the chicken broth and some of the vegetables. We're not taking any chances. Uh, the tomatoes do add a lot of acid, but we don't know how much and we're not going to take the chance, so we are pressure canning this. So once this, these have completely processed and we're going to be ready to take them out of the canner, we'll bring you back here. In the meantime, we're going back in the kitchen for lunch and open up one of those other jars and I'll show you what to do. Here's what you do after your soup has processed and you are ready to prepare it for a meal. You know, it would be lovely for us to just go to our shelf and take off a jar um, and open it up and heat it and have it already be tomato bisque soup. But so far this is not tomato bisque soup, this is just the beginnings of it. Because number one, it's not smooth and silky, and number two, it does not have the cream in it yet. Okay, so, smooth and silky, no, because we have to process it with chunky vegetables. The cream in it already, no, because um, never ever add dairy to uh, anything that we're gonna can. That is always added afterward. And then the third thing is, it's pretty thin. And tomato bisque is thicker, so how do we get it thicker? So there are several things that we can do on that. Um, you can add a little bit of flour, just like you're making gravy, or a little bit of cornstarch. I don't like those, the starchy taste to that, so an alternative, and this was a hint, that I was not aware of, that I found online. So here we have it in here, and it's all chunky, but it's thin. And so the hint was to add a couple of tablespoons of rice. Now, I have no idea what kind of rice this is. It's rice that I've had on my shelf for a long time. If you're particular about your rice, then be particular about what you put in here. But the rice serves two purposes. It will help thicken, the tomato bisque, and it also helps make it smooth and silky. So this will take about 20 minutes to heat in order for the rice to cook and thicken things up and then, oh, I'm so excited about this, I can hardly stand it. This is my, oops, my brand new immersion blender. I didn't even know these things existed. A couple of our subscribers, that's because I'm, you know, um, a woman of a certain age, shall we say. Um, I didn't even know these existed until a couple of our subscribers suggested it. And so I've been doing some research on it for quite a while and finally, in order to do the, a good job on this while it's still hot and in the pan, I'm going to give this a try out. This will be my very first time using it. So we'll come back in 20 minutes when we are ready to smooth things up and get it served. So you can see my roses that Jim got me, you know, just for no reason at all because he's a great guy. Um, he, he often surprises me with roses, which is one of the reasons why we're called Rose Red Homestead. So um, this has been uh, simmering for about 20 minutes. It has accomplished two things. It has certainly cooked the rice. You can um, see the rice as it is cooked right there, and it has also thickened it up just a little bit by evaporating some of the liquid off. Now, one more thing before we go any farther that is really important as a best practice in canning is that in addition to not ever putting dairy in foods that we're going to can, we don't ever put thickeners in. No flour, no cornstarch. Now, the mark of tomato bisque is to be smooth and silky. Like I say, I've never used this before. I've read the directions and I've had a dry run, but never in food. So here we go. I hope it's as good as everybody says. 
and I'm very inexperienced in this, so I'm not sure how it's going to do. Maybe you do this. I'm sure some of our subscribers will respond by telling me a good technique. Without this, I just would have used my regular blender. Oh, maybe this is what you do. Woo! I'm gonna make a big mess. Okay. I guess that's all there is to it. So we have our very smooth. Well, it is pretty smooth. I do see some little edges of rice. Uh oh, and there's some celery. So I'm gonna do it again. Only while I do it this time, I'm gonna add the cream. And you just add cream to up to the amount that you would like. This is probably between a fourth and a half of a cup. All right, so let's do this again. Immerse it, and I've got it on low. So it's mixing in that cream, it's gonna lighten it up. Next, we're gonna dish it up. And we are just gonna have a very light lunch, so we're not going to be serving anything with the soup today. Uh, we have a lot of options that we could serve. We've got fruit, we've got homemade bread, except I forgot to get any out of the freezer this morning. So this is for Jim. He likes bigger helpings than I do. And then here's mine. And it looks like we'll have leftovers for about one more serving. So the pepper is still very visible. Okay. And to finish this off, we are going to drizzle some more cream on the top to make a fancy design. And I think you just, I've never done this before either, but I think you just kind of stir it to make twirly designs. And then I have thinly sliced basil leaves that we're going to garnish with. The basil just adds such a lovely combination of tastes. And then to be extra fancy, we have a little sprig that we're going to kind of put on the side. So here we are. Tomato bisque soup. And I hear the pressure cooker going outside, which means it hits 15 pounds, so we need to go out and check that. We're going to have lunch, and we'll be back when we take the jars out of the canner in a while. Here comes my favorite part. We get to see the results of our canning. So the pressure is down to zero. I'm going to just double check to be sure there's no steam left, and there's not. I'm going to open it carefully and away from my face. And let's see what we've got. Beautiful. Still boiling. And liquid and veggies, just the way that it should be. So we'll set these over here. We'll probably hear some pops. <clears throat> So now we have seven more quarts of tomato bisque soup to put out in the pantry. The soup we had for lunch was just delicious. This will be a fabulous addition for us to have ready for chilly fall evenings or even into the winter. So thank you so much for joining us and thank you to our subscriber who first suggested that we look into doing a tomato bisque soup. So we will see you at our next video.